Hello again, my name is Kevin. You're watching Leatherneck Prepper. Had an issue with my video this morning, so I'm going to re record it. Let's talk about rationing. Okay, there's some out there. I see comments, not on my videos, uh, but in other uh, videos, guys that I watch, <clears throat> or other channels that I watch. They say, why don't we go ahead and enact Article 5, or let's get the party started, that kind of thing. And I'm thinking, you guys have no concept of what you're actually wanting. Um, a wartime economy, all right, let me back up. My mother, if she were still alive, would be 90 this year. I was raised by somebody who was born in the 30s, early 30s, grew up during the Great Depression, was in their teens during World War II. Same with my father. My father died back when I was a young kid. Long story, not get into. My grandparents were born back in the 1800s. So I've heard a lot of stories about things from the Great Depression, World War II, rationing, things along those lines. You can say that well, we went through 2008 with the rationing and things that we didn't have then. Uh, same way with the uh, Gulf War, shortages of different things. Um, you could say, well, the pandemic. Well, yeah, all that is no comparison to what they went through during World War II. Plus, there was no, not as many people as in during World War II. Or uh, now, there wasn't as many people back then as there are now. So there's more people fighting over more resources. So there's not going to be quite as many things that you can go down to your Walmart and get right now that you can't during a full-blown wartime economy. I'm talking a world war where pretty much all your resources are going for the war effort. Um, you see going into the local Walmart right now where they have some aisles where they just kind of thrown some stuff together to make it look like they have more than what they actually have. Okay. Companies are not producing near the choices that they have, but you still have five or six different choices of Fruity Pebbles. Different companies, but you still have five or six choices. How about no choices? Because that's what you're looking at. So, can you imagine walking into a Super Walmart? I personally have one because I live in Nashville, the outskirts. Um... I have a Super Walmart that I shop at and only half of it, maybe a third of it being available to shop at because the rest of it is empty. So they've got it portioned off, walled off, taped off, however you want to say it. Can you imagine that? I remember as a kid growing up in the 70s, there being shortages and not being able to find things. Going in stores and the shelves not have quite a lot. Um, Pandemic is nothing compared to the things that our parents and grandparents went through, especially if you're as old as I am. I'm 50, I'm going to be 51 this year. So, let's talk about a few things. I've got my tablet here in front of me, so bear with me. Let's talk about a few things that you're not going to be able to get during a full blown wartime economy rubber, anything made of rubber, tires, inner tubes. Those are the two big things. Prophylactics. They're not made of rubber. They're late. Well, late takes you out. Uh, prophylactics. Um, anything that has rubber in it or around it. Your cell phone. Um, my cell phone, my, my case, it's around my cell phone. It's got rubber around it to protect it. So many different things have rubber in it. So many different things are made with petroleum. So think about it. You're not going to be able to get stuff like that. And you say, well, I've got two sets of tires stored. Tires, they go bad, believe it or not. About five years is about as long as you're going to get out of, of them. The rubber gets so hard, it's not really useful. Now, will it get you down the road? Yes. But in wet weather, you can go slipping and sliding a whole lot more. Trust me. I've been there, done that, tried to make a set of tires last a lot longer than what I should have. So anything made with rubber. Cars, bicycles. There were several years you didn't get any new cars. You want that new Challenger? I am. Unfortunately, I, it's not in the cards. But that new car you want ain't going to happen. 
bicycles, anything made like that, scooters, skateboards, things like that, you're not going to find. Let's keep moving on. Gasoline, any petroleum product. So that's lighter fluid. That's liquid natural gas. That's uh, you know something for your propane stove, uh, like your, uh, your white gas, kerosene, things along that line. You're not going to see that type of fuel. And so many different things are made from petroleum products. You're not going to get it. So, or I can't say you're not going to get it. It's either A, going to be extremely rare, hard to find, or very expensive when you do get it. So that vacation you want to go on, ain't going to happen. Metal containers and anything containing meat. So the uh, can of Wolf Brand Chili, which you may like to eat. I'm just using that as an example. You ain't going to find that. The number 10 cans, all these little cans that all this food comes in, your spam, you're just not going to find it. Aluminum foil, plastic wrap, things like that is going to be extremely hard to find, very rare. And when you do, again, you're going to pay out the yin yang for it. This one hurts. Now, I don't use a lot of sugar, but those that like sweet tea, Southerners, you're hurting because sweet tea. That's a southern staple. But sugar and coffee. If you don't have coffee put back, coffee's only going to last for so long before you run out. You can only store so much. You say, well, I don't drink coffee. Well, people like me that love their coffee, and I do love coffee, you're just not going to find it as readily available. You're also not going to have the choices that you have now. You want to run down to your local Starbucks? Ain't going to happen. Plus, all the people that work at Starbucks, they're not going to be there because you're not going to get them. So, think about it. Coffee is, if you don't drink coffee, having coffee put back, even a smaller amount, freeze-dried or whole bean stored properly, it's going to last a long time. People that do want it, if they run out, because I've only got so much room, I can only store so much coffee. I don't have years and years worth. When I run out, if I can't find any and you've got it, that's going to make you some money. Think about that one. Here's something else. Shoes, new clothes, anything made with leather, anything made with, um, well, the rubber soles on the shoes. Uh, they may have um, imitation rubber for that, but now, but Anyways, shoes. Shoes may become available. Boots, new working boots. You're going to have to learn how to make things last a lot longer. Cobblers, they're a dying breed. So cobblers probably could make a pretty good living fixing shoes. Other types of foods. Any type of canned meat, which I think we already covered. Lard, that's right. Your Crisco, your cooking shortening, butter, cheeses, any type of fats, oils, margarine, butter. You're not going to find them. Or they're going to be severely rationed. You're only going to be able to get so much for so long a period of time. And that's just the way it is. That's how a wartime economy, an actual full-time wartime economy works. This is for a major war. We're not talking about like the Gulf War or the war on terrorism. We're talking about a full-blown world war. I mean, another one. This is the last one. Wheats. Wheats, flour, things like that. Uh, cornmeal, cornstarch, things that you would bake with. Yeast, spices. All are going to be rationed. And it's not something that you really want to deal with. You don't want to be able to go, hey, I can't bake a loaf of bread where I can only buy one loaf of bread. Or there's only three loaves of bread at the store. I mean, you can only put so much of that type of stuff back. Now, some guys have huge stockpiles. They've got the ability to do it. They've got the um, the underground bunkers and places like that. Your, your Bill Gates and your George Soros and people like that. They can afford to have tons and tons and tons of this. They're not going to suffer. But we're talking about this. We're talking about a war that the only reason why we're even 
contemplating it is so that the super wealthy, the uber rich, the ones that try to control us, can have the little playground to launder their money. That's it. We don't need to do this. This is only going to end badly. And those of you who want this need to be careful because you may get what you wish for. Have a good one, guys.